So hi everyone, uh, welcome in. Uh, we are going to be talking about Kubernetes with a bit of chaos, right? We are going to be uh, breaking a Kubernetes clusters to understand its components. I have my friend here. Hi, my name is Ricardo. I work at VMware. I develop Ingress in Ginex, but I'm not going to speak about Ingress in Ginex. Don't ask me about CVEs here, please. And uh, I like Legos, Star Wars, both of them. And uh, yeah, and a bit of chaos as well. So I'm his friend. So. <laughs> so I'm Anderson Dubok, I'm a Google Cloud engineer, and I work with my customers to make them happy. That's what I do. <laughs> so this is the real cover, right? Because we're going to be breaking stuff. Yes. <laughs> so all the time, we are going to be like uh, bringing a Kubernetes cluster up, breaking some stuff, and checking how to fix it. So, yeah. so cool. first, yeah, who here has CKA? the certification, right? Do you have it, Ricardo? I uh, had that in 2018, I guess, when it was launched, and it just expired and I never got back because, you know, I am too lazy, but uh, yeah, you, you did as well, right? Yeah, I had mine in 2018 as well, so it expired, I, and I remember some of those questions, and some of those questions were related to fixing stuff, right? Yeah. So the VAC that we built here in the presentation is actually very helpful for the exam. And also there's a question, Mia, the dog, has a question, so that I'm gonna be like more than a rhetorical question. So what is Kubernetes, right? So I believe we're a KubeCon, so Kubernetes, we know what it is, but for you, Ricardo, what Kubernetes looks like? Something that brings me money. It's true, that's my salary is based on Kubernetes, but uh, yeah, so uh, we, we added this uh, stopwatch because Kubernetes is kind of uh, this stopwatch, yeah. at least for me, right, that you know that when it's working, it's working fine. When it wakes you up, it wakes you up and usually you get like, you know, uh, uh, worried because you may be out of time, right? And, uh, you know, it seems simple, but maybe complicated, right? Yeah, so like an alarm clock. So what we did when we were a child, I tried to disassemble it, right? And try to reassemble it. So we are going to do the same with Kubernetes. Some of those components are mandatory, some are not, right? When you're disassembling something like an alarm clock, you can't forget like a, a screw or something, but there are some things that you cannot forget, like, there are some optional stuff, like the, one, the thing that you work with. Ingress? Ingress. Yeah, That's yeah. optional. No one needs that. I don't know why people keep using So Ingress. the metrics of it, who needs metrics, right? Yeah, I mean, no one. So what we are saying here is like, when you are trying to... Something, stop it. Let's see, let me try to bring back to three. Hey, it's not working. Like it's not Kubernetes, but we broke that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's going on? See, we are good at that. Yeah, it works. Like Windows, you just turn off, turn off. I reconnected the cable. Yeah. Uh -oh. Oh. The cable is bad. Keep it holding, yeah. Keep this way. So, <laughs> I'm gonna. You're gonna be fine. You wanna switch to my Mac? Maybe. I don't think it's a Mac. I think that's the problem is here. Yeah, you let me go. pick another one. Always be prepared. Found it? Yep. Let me try without the dumb goal. I told him something can be wrong. Something can go wrong. I wasn't expecting that would be the dumb goal. Oh crap. Mine do not need the dumb goal. Is it working? No. Yet, but it's gonna be. No. Mm. 
Got it, work. So, open DMT here. Mm -hmm. No? Take off your... Sorry, folks. Cool. The issue is when you forgot to reassemble something, right? The issue is when you are building back that alarm clock and what happens? You forgot something that was very important, like scheduler, like a controller manager. So I'm gonna be switching to the terminal here. Is it working? Is it readable on the back here? Yeah? So you're the pilot. Cool. So here's the thing, right? And uh, we forgot something and we wanna look under the hood and see how is our cluster, uh, what's broken, what are the signs of the component that may be broken. I want to show this slide now, so just because you said it. Yeah, we forgot. So yeah. the other slide is going to be, let's look under the hood. We are going to have like a broken cluster and we are going to see what is not working, right? So Ricardo is going to be... I'm going to be here, yeah. So it, th this is the thing, right? You got your cluster and something is broken and you have signs that your cluster is broken. And you're gonna have this during your certification, but you're gonna have this on your real life, right? Unless you are using a managed cluster by some cloud provider, and even that, at some times, you're gonna have something that's gonna be broken. So how I would start checking my cluster? I just wanna see the version. As show me the say. version. I'm gonna show you the version, boss. He's my manager in, not in real life. Also in real life. Yeah, and I mean, I'm calling my kubectl. Who calls kubectl? Who calls kubectl? Just oh, to see on, the wrong. So. Who calls kubectl? Yeah. Okay, that's great. We don't judge anyone. <laughs> okay. So my cluster is not uh, answering, and uh, I need to figure out what's going on, right? So. What Maybe do you think it's gonna... the first thing is the API something? Maybe. So API server, it's the uh, API, it's actually the entry point of everything in Kubernetes, right? So you have this API server, every time you do kubectl something, it goes to the API server and from the API server to etcd and all of the other components also talk with API server. So let's take a look, I have this, so I'm running I'm running, yay, I'm running Kind here. Uh, who uses Kind? Yes, Kind is an amazing tool. Don't use that in production, okay? <laughs> it's like, hey, your manager says, hey, I need a Kubernetes cluster, and then you install Kind on your own machine, and then you go home and pick all Repeat of the- with me, do not use in production. Do not use Kind in production. I do. Yeah, see? And <laughs> so let's take a look. Uh, I'm gonna exec into this uh, kind cluster into the control plane here, right? And I'm gonna take a look, like, what kind has it? So what, what is the cryctl? Cryctl, it's the container D, uh, cry, uh, the container runtime interface control that runs inside the kind cluster and usually now on new Kubernetes nodes because you don't usually have Docker the common anymore, right? So Docker uses a container runtime as well. That's like Docker PS, but we try CTL. Yep. Take it. Thank you. Yeah. So <laughs> if you take a look here, you're gonna see that we have uh, just two containers, local provisioner and etcd. Etcd is our key value uh, database that is used by Kubernetes API server and nothing else, right? So we don't have a Kubernetes API server. We do not. I Let's do not fix see it. it. Cool. This environment, it's a self-contained Oh, that's a pun intended, sorry. Uh, that's a, a contained environment that uh, we created for this exercise. So I know uh, I have made a backup of the uh, API server and I'm gonna uh, reinstall that, right? Uh, we are not gonna deep dive into how to do that. Uh, I'm just gonna put API server back again and see what happens. Cool? So I know it's here. Cube API server, etc, Kubernetes. Why you type? I have a question for you. Yeah. Why are you? Why are you putting on the ETC Kubernetes manifest? Cool. So every node that runs Kubernetes, 
Have you know that you have like kubelet running? The, uh, uh, yeah, kubelet, right? We are gonna get there, but uh, the uh, component of Kubernetes that does all of this node integration, gets the pods, creates the containers. You have a directory that you can put YAML files that will run pods, even if you don't have your API server running, right? So it's what we call uh, static pods. So if you take a look into this manifest, right? You're gonna see that actually it is a pod and it's running. So we run Kubernetes API server inside Kubernetes, cool, right? Yeah. That's how the things they work. Yeah, show me the version. Show me the, the version, okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, so API server is running here. Oh yeah, nice. Cool, and now version, here we go. First of all, first thing, API server is running, right? Done. So the first time I have tried, I did kubectl, whatever, get ns versions, the most simple comments, and something failed because my API server is bad. So before you deploy my app, mm -hmm. uh, show me the namespaces. Now it should be working, right? K get ns. Nice. Yeah. Cool. So deploy an app for me? Yeah, I will deploy an app for you. Uh, that's what Kubernetes is that for, yeah. right? Yeah. Cool. So I have this make file that I have created here that deploy apps really fast because I want to be a pretty productive uh, developer so I can uh, keep, you know, watching TikTok while the application is running. Yeah, so yeah, I did this make file. It creates a deployment for me with this image, which is like an image, and it has exposed the service now on the port 90. So that it's just a demo application and it should be running, yes. right? Yes, show me you the wanna pod. You want to see? Show me the pod. Yeah. No pods. Oops. Oops. The, show me the deploy. Why? Ah, okay, because I deployed. Okay. Yeah, you did a deploy. Sorry, boss. So, there's a deploy there. And the replica set. Where uh, did it? I mean, I think there is a problem here because I have this like Redis 0 yeah. slash 2. No pods um, ready. Yeah. So there is an object uh, when you create deploy, right? Yeah. Uh, something should be created after the deploy, which is a replica set, and then the replica set will create the pods. So it should at least have a replica set, right? Replica yeah. set? No replica set. Mm. Mm, looks like con control something, controller. Yeah, control something, yeah. <laughs> the control, whatever. Yeah, the, yeah, that's a, yeah. cool. <laughs> so, uh, Kubernetes has this component which is called controller manager. And if you look and read what controller manager is, that's a really nice explanation that says controller manager controls the reconciliation control loops of the control of controllers. <laughs> something like that. Control right? something. Yeah, that's uh, something like that. And to be honest, this, the explanation and the name, it's not like that. I'm, I remember that's something simpler, but that's just what gets into my head, you know, like controller controlling controller something, whatever. So cool. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. But uh, the thing is that when you create things on your cluster that needs to be, ha to, that needs child objects uh, and they are core objects, like the deployment creates a replica set and the replica set will create pods. Or the daemon set, uh, the daemon set is that one that you create and say, I need this running on all of the nodes or on a specific set of nodes and it needs to create pods. So what does that function? It's what's called a controller manager. Right? Yes. So, so show me the controller manager. Let's go there. Docker, exec, cryctlps. Oops, cryctl. See, that's live, folks. No controller manager. So we have Kubi API that we fix. Yeah, but no controller. So shall we fix it? Yes, please. Okay. Same thing. So I have this back it up. And again, uh, we just made this backup because. You don't want to show, you don't want to see us like writing a whole YAML file, uh, doing certificates, like this is not Kubernetes the hard way from Kelsey, right? So mm -hmm. you can go to Kelsey's Kubernetes the hard way and see, uh, you know, like the whole thing. Our idea is just to show uh, what happens when the components, they are down, and keep, keep fixing that, right? So this is fixed let's take a look. Crysis LPS, it is running, but let's see, get, Sorry, K okay, get replica set dash W. There is nothing yet. Yeah, it's gonna take like a minute but or so. It's gonna be, right? Because controller manager takes something like 30 minutes to start working. So while that, uh, you know, I told that I wasn't gonna do any jokes 
and I didn't, you see, because it was faster than me doing jokes. So it's running now, and as you can see, there is this application one, two desired, two current. So to recap, API was down? Yeah. We got it. Yeah. Controller manager? Yeah. Now we have the replica set. Yeah. Show me the pods. Show me the pods. The pods are here. Cool. But, but, but they are pending. Yeah. So this is another sign of something wrong, right? Who ever faced a pending pod and was like, oh damn, I wanna just go home. I don't know why this thing is pending. <laughs> Come on. Like it's 5 p.m. I wanna go watch the game or whatever, play Nintendo Switch, right? Fix some ingress in Ginex bugs. No, I, I don't do that on yeah. So why the pods they are pending? That's the question. So let's check the the pod. Describe yeah. it for me. I will describe, uh, describe pod, uh, the first one, right? Cool. Usually a pending pod, and there is a documentation on that if you take a look, but uh, it means that something uh, that the pod needs is missing, right? So you may have asked more CPU that you have, you may have asked more memory that you have, you may have asked a disk and the disk never got ready, uh, a volume, right? Or you may not have assigned any node to that. Right, so there is no node assigned. And why there is no node assigned? If there is a node, there is no pod, right? I don't know, do we have nodes? I think so. Let's see. Yeah, we do have yeah, nodes. We do have two, two nodes. Two nodes, and yes. do we have many pods? Yeah. That's, I mean, so cool. Maybe something about scheduling. Maybe something, yeah, cool. So scheduling, uh, scheduler is our third component on the control plane, right? And it is responsible and it's like really just a bunch of magic and a bunch of math, like uh, ca calculating CPU memory and doing all of those things that we learned at this, the college and never did it anymore, right? We just can go to ChatGPT and say, hey, calculate this for me and it's fine. But uh, it, it takes your requests of CPU memory, sees how many, uh, how many nodes you have and it will, allocate a node for you yeah. and just change that field with the node saying, okay, I have selected this node for you. So the node can do whatever it needs to do to run that pod. Yeah, yeah let's fix it. Okay, uh, I can fix that for I you. I want my app. You want your app, okay. So I'm gonna do CPTC, oops. Cube manifests, cube scheduler, this is Kubernetes. Okay, is it running? It's running. It's no. here, it's here. The so scheduler we have is here. the API server, the controller manager, now we have kube scheduler. Yeah, so if you do that, something like this, yay. Oh, running. Our pods, they are running. Nice. Do a wide. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's now, up. what? No, go ahead. Okay, so now that's up to you. So let's just see what we did right now. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Let's, let me go to the... Uh, the slides, of course. Uh, let me control that. Yeah, you control that. <laughs> that's, uh, too many technology for me. So what we did here, we fixed the API server. So looking at the alarm clock, we fixed the API server, we fixed the scheduler, and we fixed the controller manager. We didn't touch etcd for time reasons. Yeah. Because uh, you are going to be starting from the bottom, right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so. you, you can touch etcd on your own kind cluster if you want, doing the same thing that we did, like remove the, that from the uh, static pod and see what happens, like keep API server, controller, scheduler, oh. everything, and remove ETCD, and you're gonna see that you're gonna have some wild, nice timeouts, random timeouts on your API server. So removing the ETCD is gonna be uh, showing you like random stuff. Yeah, move on, cool. So what else? I have my pods running, what do you want from me? The wide. What? Wide, kubectl get pods. Okay, get Slap pods dash o wide, and I have my Pods, okay. each one running on a different now node. Now we're gonna be messing with network, right? Yeah. Uh, who understands the whole networking model from Kubernetes? <laughs> <laughs> no one, and I have like a CNI maintainer here. Yeah, sorry. I have actually some, uh, some other maintainers here and no one understands that. So that's pretty, you know, I'm just kidding. There is some reference on the end of the slides uh, explaining the, how, how those works, right? I know that my app has a port that okay. can expose it. Okay, so Let's we check if that's working. Kubectl is like dash yt, this one. 
backslash bin bash and I can curve for you the other pod, right? Mm -mm, not working. Something is broken on yeah, the network. Yeah. It's broken. Curve really. itself. Itself curl. Localhost 9000. Yeah, it works. So something is wrong with the network. Right? Something is wrong with the network. Let's take a look into the network. And uh, the network for us, it runs as a daemon set. So if I get daemon set dash cube system, I will see, oh, sorry, spoiler. Yeah, kinda, <laughs> you didn't saw that? Yeah, cool. So uh, we have inside kind, the CNI call it kindnet. And for some reason, which is like Ricardo messing with the cluster, it's not running because my node selector is not Linux. So if, not, if it's not Linux, it's what? You know, like it's not Windows as well, otherwise it will be equals to Windows. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, by that. so <laughs> let, me, let me edit this thing, right? Let's put the CNI back and see if the things they work. Not Linux, oops. Oh, no, not, not Linux. Okay, get pods, dash and cube system. So check cube system. Yeah, it's working. Kindnet is kind working net. now. Why the name is Kindnet? Because it's the CNI of kind. Really? And it's net, <laughs> right? Because there are sort of there are things in Kubernetes that are simple, man. Yeah. You just need to figure out the name. So try the curl again. Let's try the curl, and now it works. So what the CNI does, and uh, I think it's a good explanation, uh, basically the uh, reason it exists is just like to program routes. Uh, actually, it does other things, but uh, in this case, it needs to program routes between the nodes, so one pod on one node can reach another pod on another row, uh, another pod on another node, yeah. right? And they need to be reachable between each other without any fancy magic, any net, any masqueration, nothing. So I have this cluster, I have all of those IPs, and I need to reach from node one to node two to node three to whatever, if they are part of the same cluster. And CNI right here, what this is doing is just like programming the routes, okay? Nice. What so else, boss? Two apps now. Second app? We okay. call it microservices. Uh, yeah, one talking to the other. Yeah, that's, that's a micro stuff. microservices. Okay, so I have created my second microservices for you. Yeah, we have now two apps. Uh -huh. Show me the services. Show me the services. So, yeah, I so have we now have two IPs on the services. One and two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Usually we use those services IPs to reach uh, the pods from one cluster to, from one application to the other application Perfect. without relying on the pod IP, right? Because the pod IP, they change. So if I go, just go and delete the pod, the, the IP is gonna be changing. The idea of the service is to have a kind of a VIP address uh, that I can use to reach my application. So let's try. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use the wrong name. It's a, like a proxy? Uh, Proxy is a bad name, but yeah, like a proxy. <laughs> proxy is a bad name. Yeah, cube, cube proxy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's let's try here and let's see if from my pod, okay, kubectl exec, I can reach my uh, services from app two, right? Yes. And I let's should. try it. Let's see if it works. No, it doesn't work. It's not working. And uh, why it's not working? Can I check? Yes. Okay, so let me check my kube proxy. And uh, kube proxy, it's that component that's responsible for uh, creating those IP addresses and those node ports when you create a service, right? As everything inside Kubernetes, it's kind of a controller. Uh, and the idea of controller is like, get this object, do something over this object, and turn that into something else, like the ingress creates uh, 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 servers, uh, proxies. The, the, the deployment and the pods, the, the pods create uh, containers that are gonna be run inside. Kubelet runs containers based on the pods, containers, yeah, and so yeah, on. Yeah. So the kube proxy, it's gonna just program uh, uh, network rules that will make those IPs actually point to the real uh, endpoints IPs of the pods. So my kube proxy is not running because I did the same mistake here, right, because- Yeah, uh, not Linux again. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of tired, you know. <laughs> KubeCon, a lot of parties, I just keep breaking things and forgot to fix those. Kube proxy. And I'm so by fixing Kube proxy, are we going to have the service working? I hope so. Okay, Isaac. Oh, come on. KubeCTL, Isaac. Uh, where is it? KubeCTL, get pods. KubeCTL, Isaac. That's right here. Bash and I'm gonna do that curl 
on these uh, services too. So we are from the pod one, yeah, got it. Pod one, two services, the services two. on the pod, the service on the application too. Yeah, the service AP too, and it's working, right? Perfect. So kill proxy services, when your services, they are not working, your node ports, probably you have a problem with kube proxy, right? So by now we have um, uh, fixed the CNI that was not uh, routing. Yeah. Now we have a service IP working. Yeah. And I want to use names now. Yeah, why? <laughs> I don't know, because school. I mean, it's, it's just easy. You can just need to memorize IPs. Yes, of course. Come on. IPv6 is easier to yeah, memorize. Yeah, IPv6 is easier. So I have this name, app2, right? Every time you create a service, it will kind of associate a name for you, which will be like app2, like the service name, dot the namespace, which is default, SBC cluster, local, point. Yeah, it's not working. Hmm. Want me to try Google? Yeah. Try Google. <laughs> okay, I can try Google. Probably the problem is here. Maybe google.com. Yeah, it's not working as well, so the problem is Google. As a Google employee. <laughs> so, I resent that. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. No, don't get fired. I'm just kidding. Google, don't fire him. <laughs> so, so show me the deploys of the kube system okay. before I get fired. So. Don't, don't, don't get fired. Okay, get deploy dash n kube system, core DNS, and uh, yeah, it's, it's top it. So we have this in cluster DNS, right? which is responsible for, uh, you know, solving, resolving the addresses of, uh, the, of the, the, the pods they make queries, like Google. Yeah. But also, what? Everything else. Yeah. And everything else, including those reconciliations of like, you have the service and the service will resolve to something. So, so what is the issue? I see ready zero, zero, it means that. Yeah, you asked me to, you know, save money and I just <laughs> said like a replica zero, you know. I did right. He asked me to save money. So no replicas means no DNS, right? Yeah, but means also no money spent on DNS. <laughs> QGate pods, uh, dash n cube system. Uh, is it running? It's running. It's running. So yes. K exec. Oh, come on. Cube CTL exec. Oh, cube CTL. You, you, you messed with my. Kubectl get pods, kubectl exact dash yt. I need to create an alias for that, yeah. Bash, cool. So if I curl the Google first. Google is working. <laughs> it's working. Yeah. So okay. now try the app. Stop doing the escalation on incidents to Google, folks. It's working. Default SVC cluster. Let me clean the screen, right? Yeah, oh. working. Working, now name. Yeah. So. Cool. Back to the slides. Back to the slides. Okay. So part one was the control plane. Part two is the networking. So right now we fixed like at first the CNI because we are not routing. So you folks see, saw that uh, if we do not have the CNI, we do not have network security. So it's better that way, I guess. No? Yeah, that's safer. safer. It's wordless. For sure. Could proxy. And now core DNS. So off to the bonus because we have time. We have right? time? Yeah. Okay. We have, yeah, we have five minutes. Cool. So there's a thing that I want you to break. Yeah, I can break that for you. So what happens if I break kubelet, right? So as we've said, uh, I didn't broke kubelet before, otherwise we are gonna just be like here, eh, nothing is working, I don't know why. Yeah. But uh, kubelet, it's the responsible running on the nodes to receive those requests. When you have the pod and the pod has the node name, kubelet will just keep watching the API server and see, hey, look, I have a new workload that I need to run. So it will get the pod specification, see I need those images, it needs uh, this amount of resources, whatever, program everything on the node and do the real hard job, right? So I've broken kubelet. Now deploy a new app for me. Make deploy app. What's the name? Deploying. App3, we are creative. I'm getting old, so I need to keep watching the script. Sorry, folks. It's working. Okay, get pods. And it's pending. It's pending. But the others, they are running, right? So uh, why the others are running and this one is pending? Because Kubelet doesn't keep... Kubelet is not responsible to, like, uh, it is. Sorry, it's like... Heavyweight. 
removing yeah the pods, but it's not like hey I don't have kubelet so I'm gonna kill everything. Imagine like what a chaos so scenario. So right now we have it's the API server, we have scheduler, we have controller manager. Just kubelet this down. Can I fix that? Yes. Okay. Kubelet fix. Uh, this is kind of the lazy thing because just for the demo. Because the way that I have removed Kubelet on this, uh, uh, on this example, we did like just stop it. Kubelet. Stopping so, the service. Yeah, so, so it's working now and it's running now, right? So even cool. if we have like the controller, the API server, the scheduler, yeah. if we do not have Kubelet? No well. pods, they're gonna be. So if I have just one node without Kubelet and the others with Kubelet, probably all of our pods, they're gonna be, you know, scheduled on the other node as soon as we have more yeah. Kubelets running. Cool. Something else? Security. Security. Yeah. Uh, who loves network policies? No one loves network policies. Come on, folks. Cool. So we have a quick demo uh, for the network policies, which is uh, I'm going to create this network policy here that says when I have uh, on the app one, right? So my target is app one. And on app one, I will just accept ingresses, uh, ingress traffic from app two. So from app two, I can call app one. But from app three, I cannot call app one, right? So let me apply this thing really fast. The chef manifest netpod, right? And it's uh, the network policy is created. And then I get the pods. IP address. The show wide, yeah. And I want to exec from pod uh, from app two, curl app one as the default. Close oh, you're the trying the name. Yeah, right, easier. It's working. And if I try from app3. See, names are useful. Sometimes. <laughs> when you are, yeah. Shouldn't be working, right? Because I say I just accept traffic from app2, but uh, you know, like app3 is also working. What's missing here? Uh, it's your job to make the. It's the my work. job, cool. <laughs> So uh, we have this uh, network. Uh, so when you install uh, Kubernetes cluster, you select a CNI usually, right? When you are not using uh, the manager. So you have Cilium, you have Calico, you have Flannel, you have uh, Antria, right? I need to speak about my man, my boss, right? So yeah, Antria, great, great CNI. Uh, but uh, you know, not, of, not all of them, they support out of the box network policy because network policy, it's not the job from CNI, it's something else. Right? So you need something getting those network policies and creating uh, network rules for that. Yes. So we did something here, which is uh, we are installing Kube Router as the uh, network policy provider. Right? If I do a get pods dash and cube system. Everything should be running at cube system. Yeah, it's, it's starting. Almost. Yeah. He told me it was going to be fast. Yeah, it's yeah, fast. It's fast. Yeah. Worry. And uh, now if I try from app two, it should still get, right? But if I try from app three, it's getting denied because now my network policy provider is ready. Okay? So this is the one that we didn't fix. Yeah. It wasn't deployed. So Yeah. <laughs> Actually the fix was deploying. Deploying. Yeah. So Yeah. Go for it. So part three is, was the extra. So kubelet. kubelet. If that wasn't working, it doesn't matter the API server, the TCD, or scheduler. If the node does not have that running, nothing is going to be uh, scheduled for the pod side. So we actually deployed the network policy provider uh, to have that kind of functionality, right? Yeah, you need some CNI that has network policy provider or you can deploy your own. So some stuff we didn't cover on the presentation, but we are going to be covering <coughs> the example. Yeah. Right. So what didn't we cover on the presentation uh, on, in this demo? But on the Git uh, repo is going to be available. Yeah. The CRI, the container runtime interface, the CSI, the storage interface, the ingress controller. We're going to be uh, breaking stuff. Yeah, we're going to be adding more more things on the repo yeah, as well. Yeah. So if you want to, yeah, no, right. networking model. If you guys are curious about it. Yeah. Um, the learn. presentation is already on SCAD, so don't care, folks. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, it's already there. And also the repo. Yeah. Uh, it's under, uh, under construction yet, but everything that we did today is available there. So you uh, folks can replicate this and study by yourself and try all the examples. And the make file is actually going to show you, uh, like, <coughs> uh, break this component, 
fix this component, break this component, fix yeah. this component. Make help. So make help, you're gonna see everything that you need. And we are it's, right yeah, on time, are two minutes. Out of time, we have like. Uh, this is the uh, feedback? Yeah, the feedback. Yeah. Tell Guys, we are scan. fine, so we can come back later with mm -hmm. more breaking more, more stuff. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, folks.